I think it's fair to say for me that last year was a year like I have never experienced before. It was either like I was riding the crest of a wave of some extreme highs or suffering some terrible lows. So strap yourselves in and we'll take a closer look at 2023. All right, folks, hello again. Welcome back to my channel. And I promise you, I was not being melodramatic in that introduction. When I was putting the notes together for this video, looking back across the whole of 2023, I simply could not believe everything that's gone on during that time. So much so, it might be a bit of an epic, this video. So maybe you need to go and put the kettle on before we even get started. So what I'm going to do through this reflection if you like of last year it's not so much going to be about numbers and figures about how many views i had because i've already got a video out there and if you want to click on the link in one of these in the corner here that'll give you a little bit more about the income i gained from having 10,000 subscribers across youtube over the course of 2023 this is more about a personal reflection of what happened in my life last year and also a professional reflection about the business, if you like. So I'm gonna split it into two parts. When I'm talking about business related stuff, I'm talking about workshop related stuff, that kind of thing, you will see me in my work gear like this. And when I'm reflecting on the year from a medical perspective, my disabilities and the surgeries I underwent, you'll see me dressed like this. So I hope that makes sense. So if you're just flicking through the video and you wanna know about one specific thing, you'll either see me dressed like this or you'll see me dressed like the other fella there. So, <laughs> Starting the year, I need to hand over to Sibby's Leo. If you've been following the channel for a little while, you'll know I've always endeavoured to be upfront and honest with people, even if that message has been a little bit challenging to hear at times. And the start of 2023 was a particularly difficult time for me from a mental health perspective, which I'll deal with a little bit later on. Also, on the 5th of January, I underwent knee surgery in my right knee. Unfortunately, I suffered a bad knee injury about 15 years ago playing football in my left knee, which required a couple of surgeries. And I've been overcompensating with my right knee ever since, which needed to be looked at. What does that mean? Well, it means I've got degenerative arthritis in both my knees. If you've seen videos throughout the year, you might see me when I'm doing the talking heads bit, sat down a little bit more. That's not for dramatic effect. It's the fact that I can't really stand up for prolonged periods of time without suffering pretty pretty bad pain in my knees so when you see me sat like this there's a purpose behind it okay back to this fella and during that period of rest and rehabilitation from my knee surgery I decided to sort out quite a few logistical things first and foremost formally stepping away from being a hobbyist woodworker and setting up my own business so as of January 2023 I think I'm entitled to call myself, I don't know, CEO of my own company. God, sounds impressive, doesn't it? <laughs> it's anything but. <laughs> but also in that time, obviously I had my feet up. I couldn't do anything in here. So I spent quite a lot of time in front of the computer and something I'd been meaning to sort out for a long period of time, but never made the time for was setting up my own website. So if you haven't visited my website before, there's a link in the description. Uh, just to give you a little overview of what you can find on there, if you visit hand-i-craft.com, there's a, a latest news tab, which gives you all the up-to-date stuff for what's currently going on, either in the workshop or some personal stuff on there as well. Also on that latest news tab, um, and a lot of people access this, is when I do some collaborations with companies and they pass on um, things like discounts that I can pass on to my followers and subscribers, you'll find all the links for them in the latest news tab. For example, and this is really popular, uh, I know there's a lot of folk who use O3A CA glues and I'm a huge fan of this product. Uh, if you wanna get 10% off uh, any O3A products, there is a link in uh, the latest news tab, you click on that and you use the code, all in capitals, Leo, L-E-O-H-I-C, and you'll get 10% off any O3A product, including on top of existing offers as well. So that's something to bear in mind. There's my online shop on there, which I sell my physical goods, so my charcuterie boards, um, my wood finish, and there's some merch on there as well, and some products coming soon. Uh, keep an eye on the channel for that one. 
uh, there's a custom inquiries tab so people get in touch if they are interested in a bespoke piece of furniture and finally something that I'm really proud about is the website members area which I set up in January of last year and that is a subscription service that you'd find the same basically as Patreon or YouTube membership. So for three pounds a month, you can subscribe to the website area and there's three categories of videos on there. There's ad-free versions of the public facing YouTube videos. There's vlog style videos where I talk a little bit more about uh, personal issues to myself. And also there's a behind the scenes video, which tends to work out about a weekly video where I give you much more of an insight into what's going on here, future stuff coming up, um, interactive asking for advice at times as well. So if you're interested in that, check out my website, uh, look at the tabs across the top, website area, website members, if you want to sign up to that one. Also in January, I launched my first ever product, my Food Safe Wood Wax, and I'm delighted to say it's been a real success and I get fantastic feedback from my Repeat customers, it's available via my website, so simple to use. You just apply it to your wood surface, leave it for a few minutes and then buff off any excess. A little bit more information about it, it doesn't use beeswax, it's a blend of canalba wax and mineral oil, so it's vegan friendly. And I also use it on all my worktops in here to give that protective layer and a nice smooth sheen. And it can also be used on the leather products as well. So if you're interested in it, check out my website and let me know what you think. As we enter February, the business is established and the website is up and running. So I was looking to expand the range of physical products I have to sell beyond chopping boards, some merch and my food safe wood wax. And that's when I came across a new startup business here in the UK called Chops Designs on Instagram. Now I've got to know Martin very well over the last 12 months and Martin supplies a range of acrylic templates for woodworkers and makers. When I first came across Martin's um, Instagram page, I think he had around and about 15 different designs. If you look on there now, he is closing in on 300 designs. And the beauty of that as a maker is it takes the stress of the design process out of the way. So you've got this huge range of ideas on Martin's uh, Instagram page and his Facebook page and you can just focus on the making aspect of it and he takes care of all the creative design stuff. Also, if you get in touch with Martin with your own ideas, he is more than accommodating to work and help you realize your dreams in terms of your own designs. February into March also saw two new additions into the workshop. Firstly, my Creelty Falcon 2 22 watt laser engraver, of which I've done a few videos on the channel about, and plus, the magnificence that is the Laguna 18BX bandsaw. Again, I've got a couple of videos on my channel about this. This has been by far my most expensive investment in the workshop, and I use the term investment because that's what it's been. It is a magnificent machine. It is perfect for someone who's working in my situation. I've even demonstrated I can change the blade one-handed on this, and I am so, glad that I did choose this model. I spent a lot of time researching bandsaws when I was looking for a bigger bandsaw for the workshop and it means the table saw is now gone in favour of a large more industrial sized bandsaw and my track saw on my MFT top on the workbench. In March of 2023 I hit the magical 10 thousand subscribers here on YouTube after four years of uploading content and I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank all of you new and old who have followed me on this journey and let's hope that 2024 continues in the same positive manner. As we headed into the spring in April and May, it allowed me to get back outside the workshop and get some of those jobs finished off that I never managed to do the previous year. That included treating the wood surfaces and painting the white UPVC windows to black, which worked really well, and fitting some Sapili Live Edge corner trim. Also talked about the difficulties or issues I had with Osmo UV protection oil, and I'll be revisiting that when the weather gets a bit nicer this spring. Early May could only mean one thing, and that was me and Pam heading down for our third visit to Makers Central, and what a fantastic event it was. It was so nice to catch up with some of you, meet some of you for the first time, and just have a little chat about anything and everything. 
all being well, fingers crossed and health permitting, we will be visiting again this year and it's something I'm really looking forward to and has become a bit of a highlight of our annual calendar. May also saw another addition to the workshop, which was my super sized router sled. And there's been a lot of interest in that video in the last three to six months. It's really taken off. I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank Ian, who's the guy who manufactures and sells them. It's not me that does that. Also, if you check out my vlog video from around that time, it shows the slight modification and upgrade that Ian's made since I put out the original video. So if you're interested in maybe investing in one of those router sleds i will leave a link in the description to ian's ebay page and you can check it out right uh strap yourselves in for the next few minutes because this is where it gets a bit messy uh the springtime was difficult because i was living in a state of nervous anticipation unfortunately my spinal cord implant surgery my spinal cord stimulator um got postponed a few times through no fault of the walton center it's just one of those things. But you build yourself up physically and psychologically, and then when the date gets shifted, it's, it's difficult to manage. It's not the easiest thing. And then I got given what was to be my final date, and a couple of weeks before it, um, well, I got up one morning, I started to have some pain in my lower back area, and then became real horrific pain in my abdominal area, which meant I ended up having to go to hospital and was diagnosed with kidney stones. Um, which wasn't the best of time because it then became fearful in my mind as well as having this rather unpleasant condition that, oh no, is my surgery going to get pushed back again? Is it going to get, oh, and, and it was a real difficult time for me. I've heard people talk about kidney stones as in it's the worst pain imaginable. And do you know what? It, it, was, it was pretty bad, like, but if I'm going to be truly honest, it doesn't even scratch the surface when it comes to chronic nerve pain. Uh, it, it was very unpleasant. Um, thankfully, it passed and uh, the, the antibiotics and all that managed to get itself sorted out. But it was a quite a scary time, not going to lie. Um, but I'll move you on to the next bit now. <laughs> Yes, Monday the 12th of June 2023 and after clearing all the pre-ops following that infection scare with the kidney stones, I finally underwent my spinal cord implant surgery, also known as a spinal cord stimulator, after being on the pathway towards the surgery for just over three years. Now I've dealt quite extensively with it on the channel with two videos, one post-surgery and a three-month update. Just to give you a little bit of an idea, what is a spinal cord stimulator? It's designed to help suppress, reduce chronic neuropathic pain, which I live with in my right shoulder and right side. I recently had obviously, my six-month update and the signs are looking really promising. It has helped to reduce the worst of that chronic nerve pain that I was really struggling to cope with, really struggling to live with, to be honest. Um, and yeah, it does give me more hope moving forward. Uh, it is obviously quite major surgery, as you can see here, and having to charge yourself up, having to adjust frequencies and stuff, having to live quite a careful life in a lot of ways, not being bumped, jostled, banged, that kind of thing. I need to be very careful, but that's a small price to pay considering the improvement that I'm living with now and the hope it's given me for the future as well. Now, I did warn you at the start of the video that this was a year like no other. And unfortunately, four days post-surgery, I developed an acute bowel infection. Nothing to do with the surgery, but I was later told that because my body was so weak and my immune system was so suppressed because of the surgery, I just simply couldn't fight it. And I was admitted into hospital for just under a week on antibiotic drips and follow-ups from that. Thankfully, everything seems to be okay with that and we can just move on from it. But to say I was frightened was an absolute understatement of the year. After a substantial period of rest following my spinal cord implant surgery, I got back into the workshop to do a few 
light duties before taking on my next big project, which was the bespoke burr oak and copper resin desktop commission. Now, if you're interested in doing some resin work, I really recommend you check out my channel because that was done over a four part series. So some real in-depth processes looking actually taking the slab itself to building the giant polypropylene mold, to the resin pour, to the finishing and sanding and polishing. Lots of work involved in it and I'll leave a link in the description to the series if you want to check it out. September saw the launch of my Maker's Sales Space in the fantastic red brick market in the heart of the Baltic Triangle here in Liverpool. If you haven't checked it out before, it's full of hundreds of independent traders. So if you're ever heading into Liverpool and you want to support some small local businesses, then get yourselves down to the red brick market and you might even want to buy an item off my stand as well. At the end of September, heading into October, and after keeping the secret from everyone, for such a long period of time, I could finally reveal that I was going to be appearing on series three of Handmade Britain's Best Woodworker. I was privileged, honored, and delighted to be involved in the five episodes that I was. It genuinely was that once in a lifetime opportunity, and I loved every minute of it. What made it so special? The people simple as that. The people that I met, my fellow co-contributors, the crew, the production team, everybody involved in the program just gave it that special experience and I just absolutely loved being involved in it. When I formally became a business at the start of 2023, part of that process was to take a small business startup loan from the British Business Bank and their partner Virgin Startup. And later on in the year, I was really honoured to be invited to become one of the startup loan ambassadors for 2023 and 2024 and me and Pam attended the launch event down in London. Since then it's been a fantastic platform for me to showcase my small independent growing business to a variety of local and national media and also gives me the opportunity to speak about the benefits of the British Business Bank small business loan to people who are thinking about taking up the reins and starting their own business. I'm really looking forward to speaking to a room of entrepreneurs later on in February down in Liverpool to talk about my experiences of the startup loan scheme and also to talk a little bit about the business itself. Towards the end of this year, I made the decision to be a little bit more open about the ongoing issues around my mental health. Uh, towards the end of 2018, I was diagnosed with complex PTSD, mixed anxiety and depression disorder. And living with those conditions can be a real challenge at times. Uh, living with a physical disability can be a real, real challenge at times. Living with a combination of the two can be extremely challenging. And I was contacted by an organisation called Vent, who specialise in providing safe spaces for people to be discussing their mental health, particularly men and boys. And I was invited onto one of the podcasts and it just felt the right, like the right time to do it. Um, I will leave a link in the description if you want to check the podcast out. It's about an hour and 45 to an hour and 50 minutes long. And it's a challenge to listen to at times. I pour my heart out. I be extremely open about living with these conditions and how it affects my everyday life. I have to acknowledge the fact that although I've been going through therapy for quite a period of time and I'm currently undergoing something called EMDR therapy, um, these aren't necessarily a cure. It's more about learning to live with these conditions, shall we say. And again, moving into 2024, it's given me more hope that I can manage these conditions better and provide a better environment for me to be around to help me manage those conditions. I don't know if that end bit quite makes sense. It makes sense to me. And um, maybe there's an opportunity for future content for me to be a little bit more open about some of those issues as well. And that brings us to the end of my look back on 2023. I did warn you at the beginning, it was gonna be a bit of an epic and it certainly has been. It was the best of times and it was also the worst of times, but I'm more hopeful now, having gone through all the surgeries and the continued rehabilitation with it, 
that I can look forward to 2024 in a much more positive outset. I appreciate my conditions are long term for life, but I'm hoping that I should be in a better position, fingers crossed, to manage them as I'm heading into the coming years. As ever, folks, thanks for sticking with me. You know, take care, look after yourselves. I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.